Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Haley, and today I am going to be sharing 23 of my favorite books from 2023. This year I've read a little bit under 100 books so far. Still trying to make it to that 100 goal, but amongst all those books, there have been so many amazing ones. So I'm gonna be sharing my top faves, my four and my five star reads. And since I am sharing 23, I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet to the point. So I'm just going to dive right in and I do not have like a specific order. I just have like a giant stack on my floor in front of me. So we are starting off with Happy Place by Emily Henry. And this was one of my most anticipated reads for 2023. I'm a huge Emily Henry fangirl. Beach read is my all time fave. And I actually did a entire reading vlog just for this book. And at the very beginning, it started off a teensy bit slow and I was not sure that I was going to love it as much as her other books, but this one turned out to have such a special place in my heart. I love this book so much, and I like, obviously, the romance in here. We have, like, fake dating, which is one of my favorite tropes, but also just, like, the entire storyline of this romance was a little bit different. They were together, they broke up, they didn't tell anyone they broke up. They had to pretend that they were still together on this big trip with friends. But what I really enjoyed from this book was that it wasn't just romance. It had a whole storyline about friendship and growing up and moving on. Having this one solid friend group for years and then just kind of slowly drifting apart because of life and you're going through different milestones and on different paths. And I just found this one so incredibly relatable and just beautifully written like all of Emily Henry's books. But this one is just so special and I, I really, really enjoyed it. Then I have Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings and it took me a minute to get into this one. Not get into the book because like right away I was hooked with this book, but start this series after hearing about it for so long. What really made me pick up this book and actually start it this year and start the series is the cover change, which I know is a hot topic and a very unpopular opinion, but Based on the other covers, I thought that this was going to be more of like a fantasy read. Like, I look at this cover. It's confusing. It's not something that I would normally pick up. Whereas this one, it looks Gossip Girl-esque, a little scandalous. It pulled me in and I get it. This was like the most frustrating book ever, but I was instantly hooked and it is such a crazy, salacious sort of story. I now have all the other books in the series and I will be finishing that series before the end of the year. Then I have Stone Cold Fox by Rachel Kohler Croft. And this was so fun. This is actually a debut novel. The main character's mother was like a long haul con artist, just going from man to man, conning her way, getting their money, and then leaving them in the dust. So when the main character B grew up, she was like, I will not be like my mother, but I will definitely con my way into a rich family and get that security. This is one of those books where you will probably hate the main character, but I swear you grow to love her. And I just, I really hope there is a sequel to this book because I fell in love with B and her crazy life. And in here you kind of get past and present tense of what she went through growing up and how evil her mother truly was. And you start to feel for her. She is not her mother and maybe she's not the best person, but I have a soft spot for her. I also really like the cover on this one. This one I have mentioned five million times this year and I have gotten anyone willing to listen to me to read this book and fall in love with it just as much as I have. This might be my number one from the entire year. This is Adelaide by Genevieve Wheeler and this is the most beautiful and heartbreaking story ever. The amount of tears from this book. The main character struggles a lot with mental health so definitely a trigger warning for this book but she has this up and down relationship with a guy named Rory who is half in, half out. She loves him a lot more than he cares for her. I think many of us can relate to that sort of love story. You're putting in a lot more than the other person. This one was also a debut and it is beautiful. I am so excited for anything else Genevieve Wheeler puts out next. Next, I have None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. This is her newest release this year and I love Lisa Jewell. This was a pretty crazy psychological thriller where you have an unreliable narrator and you have no idea 
what is going on? Even when you get to the very end, it's like, I have no idea what just happened. This book was specifically really cool because you have a podcast transcript that you're reading through that is in present tense. And so the story that's unfolding that you're reading throughout the rest of the chapters, which is dual point of view, P.S. between the podcaster and then the woman that the podcast is about. You're reading about the story that this podcast podumentary is based upon unfolding in the past and then it just kind of skips and gives you little snippets of what is going on. I think I explained that really terribly, but it is it is so fun. This is one of those unput downable books that I ended up reading in a single day. It was so good. Then I have Mame and this is another one of those books that I just recommend to everyone, especially if you are in your 20s forging your own path. This book is incredibly relatable. It's all about the main character trying to move out of the house, be on her own in her 20s, trying to make friends and build relationships, date, while also struggling with family issues, one being a sick parent, one that is just not really there for her as much as she should be. I just thought this one was really, really well done. If you're in your early 20s or 20s in general and feeling a little bit lost, I highly recommend checking this one out. I think that it is amazing. Then I have Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers and this is one of my all-time favorite covers. And I want to preface this one by saying if you are not into the sad art ho aesthetic, you're gonna want to move on. This is not gonna do it for you because the main character, it's kind of, there's a lot of point of views in this one so you kind of have point of views from different friends and people in this circle. The majority of the book is based on this couple with a large age gap that aren't really right for each other and are definitely figuring that out. The girl that's part of that couple is just the ultimate sad art girl. I can see most people hating her. This one also is very heavy into mental health and definitely huge trigger warning for this book. I really enjoyed all of the different voices throughout this book. One of the reviews on the back describes this as a devastatingly human book and I just feel like that is the perfect description because this is just so very raw and real and very relatable. And actually jumping off that book, if you have read that one and enjoyed it, I recommend Thirst for Salt by Madeline Lucas. This has like a very similar vibe to it where the main character is very artsy, sad girl. This is all about a couple with a huge age gap and it details their meeting and their entire relationship and then the ending of their relationship. And it really is a sad book. Honestly, this is kind of if Adelaide and Cleopatra and Frankenstein had a baby because the male main character in this book, the much older man, he definitely could take or leave this relationship. He seems very half in, half out. So reminiscent of Adelaide. This is another one that I just really loved. It kind of felt like poetry at times. I love a sad girl main character. Honestly, I do have a few more books in that realm. But I'm gonna move on into you again and this, oh my gosh, I love this book and I know there's so many mixed reviews but this book gave me life. It's often described as like a Harry Met Sally sort of vibe. This one is more of a time jump storyline where these two meet over and over again over the course of like a 10 year time span and they're just always getting off on the wrong foot they do not like each other but on one of those run-ins they're both very down on their luck and they decide to just you know what let's hang out i want to be alone so i guess i'll hang out with you so it's like an enemies to friends, to friends, to lovers. I just love this book and I love these two. Ari is like a very crass comedian. She is just so funny, very vulgar, no filter on this girl. And Josh is a little bit more reserved. He's kind of shy. He comes across very moody, very grumpy. I don't know, they just work. They make sense. Then I have What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall, and this was such a wild thriller. A lot of people compare this one to We Were Liars, but personally, I hated that book. So I would never compare that to this. But this group of three girls were liars in their youth. They had played in the woods when they were younger and then sent a serial killer to prison. And years later, they're reflecting on that event 
wondering if they put the right man away, and wondering if they did the right thing in general. So throughout the book, you're kind of trying to solve or figure out what happened all those years ago. And it sends you on a wild ride. There are so many twists and turns, and I absolutely never saw the end coming. This one was really, really good. Then I have Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton, which is actually her memoir, but it's not written like a typical memoir, which makes it so fun. It kind of feels like a journal. The first chapter is everything I knew about love as a teenager, and she's just really funny. I think Dolly Alderton is absolutely hilarious. This is one of the most relatable books you will ever read. The Bad Date Diaries. She also talks a lot about going through an eating disorder, so trigger warning there. Everything I Knew About Love at 21. My Life as a Third Wheel. Also throughout this book, she has various lists. Like this one is Things I'm Scared Of, and it says dying, people I love dying, drunk men on the street. And then there's also a lot of recipes piece in here. This one is got kicked out of the club sandwich. I don't know. I think this book is great and there is a series on Peacock. I still haven't watched it so I need to do that soon. Then I have Happy Hour by Marlo Granados and this was so fun. It kind of feels like a memoir where I had to literally google and see like is this about the author? And the answer is loosely Yes. Honestly, I need to put together a list of like books you need to read in your 20s because this is among that. This book just details the adventures of a very confident main character living in New York and she's just barely scraping by. She is just there for the vibes. She's a couch surfer, she sells clothes at like vintage markets, and yet she lives lavishly. This book is kind of all about what it's like to be young and living in the city. This one is kind of written like a journal, like here's July, and it'll have like July 9th. And it's super short, so it's like a very quick, easy read. It's under 300 pages, so good. Then I have Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau, and this is the ultimate beach read. It was such a feel-good, cute story. The main character is a sweet little church girl. Her mother and father do not talk to her about real things. It's one of those like don't ask, don't tell sort of situations. They're not very open about sex. She's not allowed to listen to certain music. They're very strict and so one summer she ends up babysitting or nannying for a very unorthodox family. The dad is actually a therapist and he ends up having a client come and live with him because he is a very high profile rock and roll star. So everything's gotta be under wrap. This summer, Mary Jane is exposed to sex, drugs, rock and roll, just a whole new world for her. So this is like a coming of age story and it is it is so cute and I just love Mary Jane. I love the entire family. I want to be part of them. And it's all based in 1970s Baltimore. Then I have My Last Innocent Year by Daisy Alpert Florin. And if you have read My Dark Vanessa, this book is in that same vein and 1000% huge trigger warning for this book. This is the point of view of a young woman who was absolutely taken advantage of at a very young age and growing up she is finally understanding what is happening and finally owning her truth. That's not an easy thing to come to terms with so this is a heavy read. The characters in here feel very real and I think it really highlights consent and coercion. And unfortunately I do think that a lot of women can relate to the main character in this book and just the events throughout. I thought it was very well written and another one with a very cool cover. This one, it feels like I have read so long ago, I can't believe that it was only this year, but this is If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan, and I believe the sequel comes out in the next few months, which is I'm so excited. This book had its moment on book talk for sure. I feel like everyone and their mothers have heard about or read this book by now, so I'll keep this short. But this is mainly about a girl in high school who grew up very close with a boy. Their parents are good friends. They were always together, but then they grow apart, as most people do when they enter high school. But my goodness, this book tore my heart in half. I cried so hard. My sister is actually in high school right now and I forced her to read this book and she fell in love as well. So I do recommend this one, especially if you are younger and in high school because I definitely think this book is more geared towards 
that age group, but I loved it all the same. It hurt my heart. <laughs> Clearly, it is the sad books that stick with me. But jumping into a thriller, this is another one that I feel like I have talked non-stop about and recommended a million times, but the only one left by Riley Sager is such a fun read, especially if you are a big true crime person and familiar with the Lizzie Borden case because this is a spin off that case. 50 years ago, Lenora Hope was home alone with her family the night that all of them were murdered. Everyone always assumed it was her that killed her family, but it was never proven. There was not enough evidence, so she was free to go. But now, 50 years later, she has a live-in nurse, Kit, who she decides that she is going to tell all to for the first time ever. And this book sends you on so many twists and turns. Riley Sager is really good about keeping you on your toes and never knowing what is coming. And this book is no different. This this was wild. This was crazy. This might be my favorite thriller of 2023. Then I have Under the Influence by Noelle Crooks and I almost did not include this one in this video because I think that I actually gave it three stars. I just had so much fun reading this one because of the deep lore behind it. If you are familiar with Rachel Hollis, a real life wellness sort of guru, self-help guru, and you're familiar with all of the drama that happened with her a few years back. Noelle Crooks actually worked under Rachel Hollis, and so there is quite a bit of truth to this fiction novel, which makes it all the more fun. So a lot of deep lore references in here. If you're not familiar, honestly hop down the Reddit rabbit hole because that shit is crazy. But the background is what really made this book so enjoyable. Just knowing that all of the craziness in here is somewhat true. Madness. Absolute madness. Next, I have X's and O's by Amy Leah, and this book was so much fun. This is so cute and Valentine's Day, I'm gonna say it's coming up because it is coming up. We got a couple months, but this, put this on your TBR. This was such a cute Valentine's Day themed book. The main character is a book fluencer. She's had her heart broken numerous times. She has not given up on love and in fact, wants to try her luck at her very own second chance romance. So she goes down memory lane and basically redates these past boyfriends. She enlists her hot firefighter roommate to help her along the way, and of course, I'm sure you can see from a mile away what happens here, but Trevor is one of my all-time fave book boyfriends. And Amy Leah's writing is just so very cute and very funny. This is just like a really cute little rom-com. Another thriller, this is one that I actually just finished. This is The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Peckerman. This one also has a bit of an unreliable narrator. And while some of this is a little bit predictable, I felt like it was a really good psychological thriller. You have dual point of views, one of a woman in a couple. She's just cheated on her husband and they're going to therapy together. And the other point of view is the therapist herself who is very unorthodox and actually just lost her license. But their lives are so intertwined somehow. This whole book, you're just kind of untangling this crazy web. Like how is everyone connected in here? What is the truth? Are they telling the truth? I don't know. This one had me hooked. I really enjoyed it. Okay, I'm down to my last four and I don't have the physical copies because I loaned them out to my mother and my sister because the first one is actually Meet Me at the Lake. This book also had mixed reviews because the whole premise is that these two main characters met like 10 years ago, they had a really amazing day together. They never talked again. They were supposed to meet up at the lake, but it never happened. Now, 10 years later, they have met again. Obviously, people are like, how are you falling in love with someone over one day? That is not important, okay? The book is cute, and that is that. I love this book. Every Summer After is one of my all-time favorite books. So I do have a soft spot for Carly Fortune, and I'm very excited for her next book to come out in 2024. The next one I have is The Maid, which is described as a thriller, but it's really more of like a cozy mystery. The main character had a very close relationship with her grandmother, and her grandmother helped her out in a lot of ways because she just is one of those people that cannot pick up on social cues. She doesn't always say the right things and people often 
misunderstand her. So when her grandma passes away, she is on her own and she finds herself in a little bit of trouble when she is accused of a murder. So this book is like a whodunit sort of thing, but my god, when I tell you I bawled my eyes out throughout this book, I could not have anticipated that picking that book up, but it broke my heart into pieces. It was both heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time. It is such a good book and the sequel actually just came out. So I'm really, really excited to read it because I I loved her character. I also have His and Hers by Alice Feeney and my girl Alice Feeney, I love her so much. She is really great with psychological thrillers as well. And this one was about a cop and a news anchor being connected somehow to a murder. This is another case of an unreliable narrator, which I am finding out that I quite like. That is probably one of my favorite thriller tropes. It's jam-packed with twists and turns that you will never see coming, and I really could not put the puzzle pieces together. It was really, really good. And the very last book is The Last Word by Taylor Adams, and oh my gosh, this book had my heart racing my adrenaline pumping. The main character, she needed an escape some time away, so she is house sitting for someone. And while she's there, she is just reading, reading, reading nonstop because she doesn't really want to think about anything. She just wants to read shitty little books all day. And on one of them, she leaves a one star rating. The author sees it and is in like a full blown comment war with her. Immediately after all this, strange things start happening in the house. And she's like, oh my God, this author is after me. What I really enjoyed about this book is that you have the point of view of the girl, the woman, also the point of view of the author as if he is writing another book about what is going on. So that made it really fun because their stories are just not adding up. These are very different point of views. And the ending of this one, oh my gosh, broke my heart. I did not think that is what was going on there. It's another one that will keep you on your toes. And that wraps up 23 of my favorite books that I read throughout 2023. I'll have links to every book that I mentioned down below, so check that out before you leave. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you again very soon. Bye!